A portion of today's video is brought to you by Autel. Recently, I have talked about my new Net Zero home that I'm building, but not all Net Zero buildings have to be homes or houses. The same Net Zero passive house concepts can be scaled up to large buildings, offices, and apartment buildings. In fact, I had a chance to visit the first Net Zero hotel here in the United States and got to see some of the creative concepts at work, stuff like this. So these are Coney elevators. Uh, they actually uh, generate electricity when they're going down. They're also DC powered. Whoa, um, so you they, just, yeah. whoa, 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 you just blew my mind. Yeah. Okay, so it's basically regen braking on your car. Yeah. It's your like, elevator. Yeah, it's like, it's like your electric car. Um, <laughs> and uh, in fact, there's, I read something that um, someone had a concept for energy storage, which is you just take a, a building that has regenerative elevators and you put carts of weights in the building and you, when at night when power is free, you lift all the weights up to the top floor. And then when there's, um, in the middle of the day, when, the, uh, when there's a need for power, you put the weights and bring them down. There's even more just like that from their solar and battery system to all the heat pumps to trying to get the hotel passive house certified. What does it look like when you scale these concepts up to that size? And does it even make sense? And will they even be able to achieve their goal of producing as much energy as they use? Let's find out. I've been sharing my experiences of building a new net zero home with the goal of being able to produce as much energy over the course of a year as I use by pairing it with solar and batteries with an incredibly efficient and airtight house. There are many paths that you can follow whether you're building new or retrofitting an old house. So be sure to check out my other videos on that. Passive House has very clear guidelines around insulation, reducing thermal bridging through the envelope of the home, and controlling heat loss from exchanging fresh air through the use of energy recovery ventilators or ERVs. Now, while I'm not going to be getting Passive House certification on my house, it will take all those aspects into account. However, this is one of the reasons I wanted to visit the Hotel Marcel in New Haven, Connecticut, which officially opened in May of 2022. Now, the story around this building is kind of fascinating. It was designed by the modernist architect Marcel Brewer and built in the late 1960s. It was used as an office building by the Armstrong Rubber Company and Pirelli Tires. But between the late 1990s and early 2010s, it was basically vacant. That's when Bruce Becker comes into the picture. He's an accomplished architect who has spent a good deal of his career rescuing buildings just like this and restoring them. Not only that, but he's also passionate about sustainability and is pushing past the way things are usually done in construction. Basically paying tribute to the history of the building while using modern sustainable techniques. There's nothing in here that's arbitrary. Everything is here. There's a reason for it that sort of either reinforces our sustainability mission or our historic preservation mission. During my tour, we started off with one of my favorite topics, energy storage. Here is um, one of our two battery rooms. Oh, wow. For the typical hotel guests, they don't know that there's Cat6 cabling that is powering their lights and their shades. But you know, this is a looks like a regular network rack, but this is how all of the digital electricity gets conveyed to all the lights and the shades in the building. And just to jump in for a quick second, I'll be getting back to that whole digital electricity thing a little later. It's pretty cool. And then here's one of two uh, battery rooms that we have. Um, you know, they're lithium iron batteries. These are made by LG. Each one of these 17 uh, battery modules uh, weighs 200 pounds. I, I can tell you that because my son and I brought these in and put them on the rack. They're monitored remotely. You know, the thermal management system is pretty sophisticated. This is our inverter. Don't get too close to it because it's high voltage. It's a sophisticated inverter because it does what's known as uh, grid forming. A lot of solar inverters, when the grid goes down, the inverters go down too because they don't have a way of generating uh, sort of the, the sine waves for the alternating current. But what this does is it synchronizes the power from the batteries, from the solar, and from the grid. So they can all work together in unison, or you can work with just two of the three sources or just one by itself. Right. All you need is one to power the whole building. Right. And we've had situations already where the building was filled, there was a special event, the grid in the neighborhood went down, but we were able to keep going without any, <laughs> any kind of interruption. In fact, we didn't, it doesn't even flicker. It just goes continuously. There, we also have a, microcontroller system made by a company called Agito. So we can actually monitor in real time uh, what's, what's actually happening. So I can pull it up on my iPhone here and you can see the uh, yellow line here is 
the uh, power that's being exported to the grid. And then the green line is the solar production. And you could see that we had drawn down, this, the pink line is the battery uh, charge level. This line here, it's, it's about 92%. So we typically will draw down from the batteries at night and to do what's known as peak shaving to keep our demand charges um, sort of in a reasonable level so that we're really not subject to demand charges. And then if you look closely, you can see these uh, orange line, which is the load for the building spiking. And that's whenever our, our uh, laundry is doing uh, drying of sheets. <laughs> so uh, we monitor this. And our goal is over the course of the year to be a true net zero building so that we would produce as many kilowatt hours as we're using. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack there, but in short, the hotel is set up like a microgrid. It's not that different from the way my new home will be like with solar and battery storage. It can operate in conjunction with the grid, selling back excess energy production into the grid to help reduce their demand charges. It also helps to support the local community with clean energy production, but it also means the hotel can operate independently, which I know is a huge motivator for a lot of people to go solar on their own homes. But will the hotel actually be able to achieve net zero? We won't know for sure. We certainly can't make that claim until we're, we've seen a whole 12 months of production and, and energy use. My current expectation is we're gonna to have to add more solar powers because I think we actually slightly understated the amount of energy the dryer uses. The dryer actually, when they're both on, they actually use as much, actually more than the whole rest of the building together. Wow, just from the dryers? Just from the dryers. Because that's the only resistance electric use in the whole building. After that, we made our way up to the roof of the building to see the solar panels, which includes over 1,000 solar panels from the company SunPower. Now about a quarter of the panels are on the roof and the rest are on the solar canopies over the north parking lot where they have a bunch of EV chargers. And speaking of EV chargers, I'd like to take a minute to thank Autel for sponsoring this portion of today's video. They make some really premium smart EV chargers that you can get for your home or workplace. Their Maxi Charger AC Home can work up to a maximum of 50 amps, which means you can get up to 12 kilowatts of power to your car. That means a much faster charging time at home. That can be up to nine times faster than the standard AC charger that came with your car. Now the charging rate is completely configurable through their hardware or their app, which leads me to the smarts that are built into their charging system. You can set up and view charging schedules within their app and receive real-time notifications for your current charging status anytime, anywhere. They also have multiple connectivity options with an RFID enabled start and stop, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or Ethernet. Now, if you're researching the best EV charger for your vehicle, head over to the URL in the description and see what makes Maxi Charger an excellent choice. Thanks to Autel and to all of you for supporting the channel. So that covers the energy generation and storage, but when it comes to passive homes, one of the most important factors is the insulation and air tightness of the home. Now all houses breathe, even when the windows are closed, but that comes from air working its way through the cracks and holes in the house's envelope. That's why air tightness is key, but an airtight envelope brings some problems like, I don't know, say fresh air for breathing, which brings us to the energy recovery ventilators or ERVs. Now, these silent, efficient devices can provide continuous, filtered fresh air to the house while pushing the stale air out. ERVs transfer heat in order to achieve maximum efficiency and healthy inside air quality. Now, in winter, the system uses the warm, stale air exhausted from the inside to preheat the incoming fresh air. In the summer, the system conditions incoming warm, humid air by passing it over coils or channels containing stale, cool air being exhausted from the house. So what does the Hotel Marcel's ERV system look like? I'll give you one hint big. These are the ERVs. There's a way to get this to turn on. But these are made by Swagon okay. and they're super efficient. All the hotel rooms have 100% outdoor air. We actually monitor the CO2 levels in the air that's going to the public areas and the fan speed is actually increased if we get above about 600 parts per million. So it ramps based on how much CO2 is actually in the exactly. air. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. In fact, I was, um, we had an event for about 250 people here on Friday. We can see in each room that the event's in, this was at 573 and I just checked. I said, well, and they had just started to ramp up because they really don't want it to go above 600. Although it's pretty routine if you go to a typical hotel to see 900, 1000 above, mm -hmm. because most people don't even know what their CO2 concentration is. Yeah. So this is something that we monitor and it's tied into our building control system. Wow. So these handle the entire hotel? Yeah, well, there's there's uh, two. There's one on each side here. All the fresh air comes in from above. Uh, one ERV serves the upper portion of the building. One goes straight down. 
Now, it shouldn't be a surprise to hear that they're making a lot of use out of heat pumps, which is the most energy efficient way to heat and cool things. Not just for heating and cooling the air, but also for hot water. I've got another video that walks through why heat pumps are essential for the future that you can also check out. But for the Hotel Marcel, they've got an impressive heat pump hot water system that's broken up into two parts. The first one is inside. Heat pumps typically have an indoor and an outdoor unit, but the same is true for the domestic hot water. This is the um, indoor unit for the domestic hot water, which provides virtually all of the thermal heating. There is a resistance coil in here if needed, but it's really never needed. And we get uh, hot, hot water, 142 degrees. These are just storage tanks in case we have all 165 rooms using showers at the same time. But we haven't had a single complaint here with um, hot water, which is an achievement. And you probably guessed it, but the second part of the system is outside. So those are um, two of the first domestic hot water heat pumps that Mitsubishi makes, these two here. And then these are just a larger version of what you'd have at your house. Yeah. We have an array of them here, as well as up on the ninth floor in the mezzanines. But there's no combustion. It's all electric, basically just moves thermal energy from one place to another very efficiently. But what about the rooms? Well, it's not completely passive house related, but because the hotel is using digital electricity and power over ethernet systems, it makes it really easy to not only deliver power to the things like lights, but you can add smart controls to the same cable. It's data and power. These are the corner suites, which are pretty special. But one of the things that I, that's sort of fun is with these, these shades, which are all centrally controlled, you know, we can, uh, control them centrally. Uh, there's actually a button that uh, you can press if you want to go to sleep. You press the night button and all the blackout shades come down together. And then there's also a uh, morning button. On the touchscreen as you come in, there's even a romance button. I can't tell you where that is. <laughs> These shades are made by a company called Power Shades. We asked them if they could make power shades that would work with power over ethernet. And they said, sure, because these shades are, they're DC controlled. They have ones that will just work off of solar energy, but these are fantastic. So the majority of the wiring in this hotel is probably just like cat five, cat six. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to have a licensed electrician. There's actually a lot less wiring because from the nodes in the corridor, we just have a twisted pair that is then daisy chained to each set of lights that's on the same circuit. The hotel's digital electricity system is powered from equipment from Volt Server, which converts AC to DC from the grid, but also allows the hotel to use DC power generated from the solar panels directly. Keeping that power as DC means you don't lose efficiency in the DC to AC conversion, and you can get more bang for your buck from your solar and battery system. We don't really see this type of thing in homes yet, but it is picking up steam in large scale buildings and offices. And one of my patrons is the founder of a company called Lumen Cash, which is a very cool modular system that can easily scale for home use. So I'm expecting we'll see more and more of this in coming years. Now, some eagle-eyed viewers on my first Net Zero Home Build video noticed that there are railroad tracks not far from my new house. They asked if I was concerned about the noise, which I'm not because passive house quality homes and buildings like this are actually really well sound insulated. A good example was right in the hotel. The other thing you'll notice, because this is a, uh, designed to be passive house compliant, is how quiet the windows are. You could, I cannot hear any traffic yeah, whatsoever. You, and yet you have huge tractor trailers whizzing by, um, <laughs> only like 400 feet away. So that's the great thing about, and I'll pause so you can actually hear how quiet it is. I cannot get over how quiet this is. When you design a building to passive house standards, yeah. you know, the emphasis is on insulation and ceiling. Those things do a great job of reducing the thermal demands of the building by about 80 to 90 percent. But one byproduct is they're super quiet. Yeah. And so for someone who's trying to sell hotel rooms, uh, that's one of the primary demands of, of savvy guests is having a room quiet. Yeah. So we, we uh, score very highly on that. Now, all of this brings me back to this moment for me. So these are Coney elevators. Uh, they actually uh, generate electricity when they're going down. They're also DC powered. Whoa. Um, so you just, yeah. whoa, 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 you just blew my mind. Yeah. Okay, so it's basically regen braking on your car. Yeah. It's like, your elevator. Yeah, it's, like, it's like your electric car. Whether you're building new or retrofitting an older building, there are so many solutions that are easily accessible to improve how well a home holds onto its heat, how it reuses that heat, how it generates and optimizes its own energy. The elevators regenerate electricity every time they go down is such a simple concept and great example of that. Now, the Hotel Marcel has even more of that that I haven't even touched on. 
like how they don't use any natural gas in the building and the hotel's kitchen uses inductive cooktops, which is a far more energy efficient way of cooking. You can bring a pot to boil in a fraction of the time compared to a gas cooktop. Now this all raised the big question for me, what about cost? And why aren't we seeing this everywhere? And that Bruce had this to say. So would you say doing all this for your hotel is worth the investment? Oh yeah, I think I, I don't think it costs more than conventional. Uh, it probably took uh, a little more time to commission, but it definitely saves energy because rather than having to have transformers at every light fixture, which basically wastes thirty percent of the energy every time the, you're converting from AC to DC, we have a very efficient system for distributing the DC throughout. You know, the lighting in this building only uses like. 5,000 watts when it's all on. I mean, it's, it's, amazing. it's sort of hard to conceive, but you could just get a little Honda portable generator that could go in your trunk and you could power, power all the lighting because uh, it's so efficient. So a yeah. little more thought and planning yeah, just, is all it really takes. Yeah, and, and uh, we're trying to think to the future. I'm an architect and developer and I have the ability to just study options and pick one. In the hotel world, the pattern is to just repeat a prototype. So if you're trying to introduce some new concepts like an all electric kitchen or um, not using any fossil fuels, it's not in the book. So we had to sort of write our own book. Do you think you've kind of rewritten the book? We have, yeah, we have a new book. And uh, I think that the problem with the hotel world is there wasn't an example. Now there's an example and there's a lot of interest in this. You know, we're gonna be hosting sustainability conferences and hotel conferences and uh, you know, you can only do so much with one project, but I, I'm hoping that when word gets out about this and people get, get to come see it and see that it does work and it saves money and primarily that it's easier to market a sustainable hotel than one that isn't sustainable, that this can be a prototype and this will be a new chapter in the book that people follow. There's a lot we can learn from the work that Bruce Becker is putting into the world with projects like Hotel Marcel. I'm insanely curious to hear how their first year of electricity use goes and if they need to add more solar to hit net zero. You don't have to give up comfort and quality of life to be sustainable. In fact, I'd argue that some of the things make your own life more comfortable and raise the quality of life. But what do you think? Would you want to see your apartment building or office retrofitted just like this? Jump in the comments and let me know. And be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where we'll be discussing some of your feedback. If you liked this video, be sure to check out one of the ones over here. And a huge thank you to Bruce Becker and Hotel Marcel for letting me crawl all around the hotel. It was awesome. And thanks to all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.